Hello, I'm Tilly Douglas and today I want to show you how I've been making these gorgeous little rainbow key rings. So you can use them as key rings or little purse charms or you can sew them across and make them into bunting or use them however you want. But I just love them and they are so cute. Now I'm making a series of videos for things that you can make crochet and sell at craft fairs or on Etsy or wherever you want to sell them or to give us gifts. So this series is going to be perfect for making lots of really nice stuff that I found sells really well when I've done craft fairs. And this has been one of my absolute best sellers. They're so quick and easy to make. They don't cost a lot because they only take a little bit of yarn and your little key ring to put on the top. So this is going to be my series of really nice things that I found sell well at craft fairs. So I'm going to make a playlist and put all these little things in it so you can follow along. Make the make the little things that I've been making um, to make you some money out of your crochet. Now I'll also do blog posts for each one that I've done. So you can go along to my website at craftspaceideas.com. And all the patterns as I'm doing them will be on there. There's already some on there and this one will be on there too. So we'll get on and make this one today. And the yarn I use is cotton, 100% cotton DK yarn and it's paint box. And I get this from lovecrafts.com and I love this yarn. I've been using it for so many things. Um, I've, I've made loads of these um little rainbows because I'm just in love with them. I think they're so cute. So I've still got to put the little key rings on the top of those. So these are the yarns that I've been using um, and I'll go through the colours. So our first colour here is tea rose and then we've got the purple which is jam, kingfisher blue, grass green, buttercup yellow, blood orange and pillar red and I think they're just such gorgeous colours that go so well together. So I'm going to leave the, the link for these where I get these from at lovecraft.com. I'll leave my affiliate link in the description below so you can go and find the ones I use. But if you've got yarns that you've already got and you don't have to go out and buy more, just use what you've got. I'm always a fan of using what we've got rather than having to buy more stuff. But if you want to get the same colours, the same yarn, then I'll leave that link in the description below. Now, these are the cotton ones from this cotton, but this is another one. This is an acrylic yarn. Um, this is just some oddments in my stash that I've got. So this is uh, an acrylic and it just makes it a little bit bigger. So obviously, depending on the type of yarn you use will depend on the size of your finished rainbow. So we'll get straight on and start making them. So to do our first colour, we're going to start off with this tea rose, beautiful colour. And I'm going to do a magic circle. Now, if you can't do a magic circle, you can always chain four and then slip stitch into the first chain and make a loop like that and then work into the loop. But I'll show you here how I do a magic circle. So over those two fingers, I make a little crisscross on the back, put my thumb on the back, and then bring that yarn over the front and hold on to it with this finger. Crochet hook under the first yarn, grab the second yarn, pull it through and give it a little twist, and then grab that yarn and pull it through like that and there we have a magic circle so just pull that yarn end out and then we're going to chain one and then we're going to do eight single crochets into this magic circle or into your chain four circle whichever you prefer to do so we're going to i'm working in a us crochet terms so now we're going to do eight single crochets into this loop so we're going to go into the loop grab that yarn and pull it through 
the yarn over and pull it through two. And we're going to do that eight times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to close that little magic circle. I don't pull it too tight. Makes it easier to be able to get into the stitches if you don't pull it too tight. And then we're going to work a, a slip stitch into this first single crochet. Not into the little chain here, into the first single crochet. And if you're not sure, just count back your stitches, the little Vs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to make sure you get the right one. And slip stitch into there. So that's our first round. And the second round is also going to be in the same colour. So we're just going to chain one. And then we're going to do two single crochets into that first stitch there. So two in every stitch around. So two in that first one, two in the second, and two in every stitch around and we'll have 16 stitches at the end. And then we're going to slip stitch into that very first stitch. And then we're just going to pull that up a little bit. We're going to work our next colour so we can snip this off don't pull it through just yet so we're going to work our next color which is this jam pull that yarn and then we're just going to join this one by hooking it on and pulling it through that loop there and then we're going to do two single crochets right in that first stitch like that now before I go any further what I like to do because I don't like sewing in the ends so I make it nice and easy so we're just going to pull that loop closed now. And then I tie these two together. Makes it so much easier. No sewing in of ends, which I love. So I'll do three knots. Not too tight because you don't want to pull it out of shape. And then I'm going to tie this new jam colour. So this one, I'm going to also tie that to one of those loose strands there. So three knots. And this is how I'm going to do all the rounds. I shall just tie them all off like that. And then we're ready to continue with this round. Now, when you're tying these together, just make sure you don't tie this stitch here too tight because we do need to get into that first stitch. So just make sure you can still get your crochet hook in there. So we've got our first two stitches on there. First two single crochet. So for this round, we do two in the first stitch and then one in the next stitch. And then two in the next stitch and one in the next stitch and we're going to continue that sequence all the way around and at the end of this round we'll have 24 stitches so when we get to the end we're going to do a slip stitch into that first single crochet to join that round and then we're going to pull that out a little bit and snip off that yarn 
And our next colour is the Kingfisher Blue. So we're going to join it in just the same way as we did previously. Just going to pull that through that loop. And then do our first two stitches, which are single crochet. And then we're just going to tie those ends. We could snip these off just to get them out of the way so we don't get all tangled up. And then we're going to tie those ends together. And that's, I like to do three knots. So you can pull the purple one tight, but don't pull the blue one too tight. Because we don't want to close up that first stitch. And we can snip those ends off. So we've done two single crochet in the first stitch and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next two stitches. And then two in the next one. And then one in the next two stitches. And we're going to do that all the way around and at the end of this round we'll have 32 stitches. We've got to the end and as before we slip stitch into that first stitch. And then pull that through. Snip it off. So our next colour is grass green. All beautiful, vibrant colours. But you don't have to do vibrant colours. You can do pastels if you like, or whatever colour you prefer. So exactly the same way. We're going to drag that through that loop and do two single crochet into that first stitch. And then we're going to tie those off. We don't need to worry about this at the back because it's going to be covered up when we fold it all in half. So we can put that blue one tight, but not the green one. So three knots. I tend to make these, if I'm making them to sell, I tend to make them in kind of a production line and do lots of all the centre to start with. Do probably about 10 at a time. So do all the centres and then do them all the 10 within the purple and then all the 10 with the blue. Just makes it a lot quicker if you're doing them to sell. Or for gifts. Make lovely gifts these do. They're so, so pretty. So we've got two single crochet in the first stitch and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next three stitches. And then two single crochet in the next stitch. And one single crochet in the next three stitches. Carry on with that sequence, doing two in the next stitch. And one single crochet in the next three stitches. And at the end of this round, we'll have 40 stitches. And at the end, just going to slip stitch into the first stitch and pull it through. Snip that off. So for this round, we're using the buttercup yellow. So exactly the same as before. 
pull it through the loop, do our first two stitches of single crochet in the first stitch. Pull the green one tight, so it just pulls this little loop here tight. And then three knots. Snip those two tails off. And then continue. So for this round, we've got two single crochet in our first stitch. And then in the next four stitches, we're going to have one single crochet. And then two in the next stitch. one in the next four stitches. And we're going to continue exactly the same way with two in the next stitch and one in the next four stitches. And at the end of this round, we'll have 48 stitches. So now we're going to slip stitch into that first single crochet and pull that through a little bit and snip it off. Our next round is with the blood orange. And you know what we do by now. We just pull it through the loop to join it. First two stitches in that first stitch, two single crochet to get us started. And then tie those two ends together. Three stitches. I had to do three stitches to make sure it's nice and secure. And then snip those ends off. And continue. And for this round, we've got two single crochet in the very first stitch. And then we're going to put one single crochet in each of the next five. We're going to carry on that sequence of two in the next stitch and one in the next five. And at the end of this round, we'll have 56 stitches. So at the end of this round, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the round, pull it through. And this time I'm just going to snip it off. I'm just going to get the darning needle and just weave that in a little bit. Just take it through a few of those stitches. Don't be too fussy with it. And then just back for a couple of stitches. Snip that off. Now all these yarn ends that I've cut off, I don't throw them away. I put these in my stuffing bag and use them as stuffing. Because <laughs> I'm too mean to throw anything away. 
and they make really good stuffing. Now we fold it in half and at the joins where you can see the joins, just fold it along that line. Then you won't be able to see these so much. So to join these ends, edges here, you're going to go through the first two stitches like this. Make sure you've got four little loops on your hook there to get them all. And drag that yarn through. And then just do a slip stitch. And then we're going to go into the same stitch and do a single crochet all the way through and do a single crochet like that. So into the next stitch, both sides, grab the yarn and pull it through and do a single crochet. And we're going over the top of this tail end. So continue all the way across doing single crochets. So you can see how quick and simple these are to make. You can make quite a few in an evening and they really, they're really good if you're making them for gifts or to sell on your market stall, your craft fairs. And then once it gets so far across, I just tuck that in. Don't bother cutting that bit off. I'll just tuck it in, get it out of the way, and then just continue across. So we've got all the way across. I just like to do a slip stitch into the end and pull the yarn through. But we want to leave a longer tail this time because we're going to use the tail to sew on the little key ring. So snip that off and pull it through. Give it a little tug to tighten it up. And there is our little rainbow. Those little fabulous. I love them. I absolutely love them. I'm really a big fan of them because I just love beautiful, vibrant colours. And these are just so vibrant and lovely. I love them. So I'll show you the two types of keyring that I use. And first of all, I use this one, which is a bit sturdier and it's got a swivel and I sew this one on and it's a lot sturdier than the little keyring chains but I'm going to show you both options because I do like to use both of them so to attach this little keyring with the chain I get my two pairs of pliers I have a bent nose pair and a square pair it doesn't matter use whatever you've got and you find the little join in the split pin and get hold of it at the edge like that and then you get your other pair and you twist so twist it apart what you don't want to be doing is just pulling it apart like that because it will weaken it so if you twist it it keeps the metal strong and I take that off Open it nice and wide then find the centre and push that through those stitches on the top like that. And then reattach the little chain and then we're going to close that back up again. This is a really simple way to do them. And then twist them together. You've got a nice tight join there now. Doesn't that look fabulous? Just love them. 
and now I'm going to show you how I attach this one. So thread our darning needle and this is also how we sew in this end as well. So we're just going to weave that down into there a little bit. Make sure you don't distort your end by pulling it too tight. If you pull it too tight, just pull it back down a little bit. So we're just going to take this up. Keep going up until we go get to the middle. And I use three stitches to sew it across. Like on this one, it takes up three stitches. Just to make it a bit more secure and to make it hang nicely. So if you want to find your centre, you can just fold it in half and find the centre, which is there. And then perhaps just go into that stitch next to it there. Like that. Put your key ring on. And go into the same stitch again, pull it through. And then into the next stitch and through the key ring. Do that a couple of times. And then into the next stitch. Through the key ring and pull it through. And we'll just go over these a few times just to make sure they're nice and secure. So those three stitches, just go backwards and forwards through them. can just take that yarn through and hide the tail end a little bit so sew it through the bottom And then just take it into the centre there so it hides it down into the middle of the rainbow. Pull it out the bottom. And snip it off. And just make sure that little end goes back in. And give it a little poke with your needle. And that's our keyring done. So that's those two finished and they look fabulous. So you can use whichever ever star keyring you want and there are different types as well. I'll put my affiliate links in the description below so you can find the ones that I use. Now I have made loads of these and what I'm planning on doing is giving them away for random acts of kindness. There's a, a Facebook group that I'm part of, it's called Random Acts of Crochet Kindness. So you you leave little crochet gifts around for people to find and it's just a nice thing to do. And my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these beautiful sunshines. So we've got sunshine and rainbows. So these are my next, will be on my next video. And I'll also be using these as random acts of kindness. So um, they'll be scattered around the village where I live. And hopefully people will find find them and enjoy them. As you can see, I've got quite a few already. Um, I will be making lots more because I just love making them. So if you want to watch the video, which will be the next one, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel 
and click the bell notification, you'll get notified when I bring out the video for these, which I'll be recording next. And if you're watching this at a later date, then I'll leave a little card for you to click on so you can go and see them. And I'll also leave the link in the description below. The patterns will all be on my blog as well, so you can go and get my patterns from there. So when I'm selling these on market stalls or wherever I sell them, I attach them on these little cards. I make these cards and I attach my key rings to them. So if people are buying them to give us gifts, it just gives that a little bit of added extra. I think it just finishes them off nicely. So I'll be making some of these to put on my Etsy shop because these are what I've used for years and years and years, all, all sorts of different types of them. So I'm going to make some to put on my Etsy shop. So I'll leave the link for that in the description below if you want to go and find those. So whatever you're going to do with yours, whether you're going to give them as gifts, random acts of kindness, or sell them on your craft stall or Etsy or wherever you want to sell them, this will be my next video. So if you want to make these, then click the little notification bell to get notified when I bring up more videos and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully I'll see you in my little next sunshine video. Bye for now.